Institute, so everyone will know, because some of you don't live in District 17. It's made up of all of Leicester, and two of our four candidates are from Leicester. All five precincts of Worcester's Ward 7, which is broadly the Webster Square, Mill Street area, which is half of my city council district. My city council district 5, Ward 7 and Ward 9. Ward 9 happens to be in John Mahoney's state rep district. And also three precincts in Ward 8. Two, three, and four, and those are in Sarai Rivera's, who's here tonight, Sarai Rivera. Uh, those are in her uh, council district. For this seat, three Democrats, Doug Belanger from Leicester, Moses Dixon, and Mike Germain, are vying for the right to meet Republican candidate, also from Leicester, Kate Campanelli, in the November election. We thank all four candidates for participating in the forum. Let's give them an applause. Four votes, I'm sure of that. On a much more serious note, for 28 years, this particular state rep seat was held with honor and distinction by John Benenda. I will ask everyone now for a moment of silence and prayer in memory of our representative and our dear friend, John Benenda. We thank you very much. Okay, a few things about the ground rules, then we're going to start right in. The time limits will be strictly enforced. We have two young women, Brittany Legacy, right in front, and Cindy Nagoyan, both right in front, ready. I probably mispronounced it. Cindy, all right. Cindy, correct me. Yeah. How do you pronounce it? Yeah. Oh, Nia. Yeah. Well, you were on that. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll, always, I'll, I'll correct that later on. Okay, each candidate will make a one-minute opening statement. We have four candidates, so we have to watch the time. And again, Brittany and Cindy will enforce the time limits. When you hear stop, you'll know that these two are serious. <laughs> Round one, asking questions of the candidates will be Walter Bird. To my left, he's the senior writer for Worcester Magazine. Worcester Magazine is the forum's main sponsor, so we thank WOMED. Also on the panel, Hank Stoltz, WCRN radio personality and a host of the Hank Stoltz Experience on Charter TV3. And of course me, Gary Rosen, District 5 Worcester City Councilor and host of Rosen's Roundtable on WCCA TV13, which is broadcast four times a week, but you can see it online anytime you want at your convenience. Okay. So we'll be asking some questions, then round two. Round two is kind of unique. Each candidate will have an opportunity to question the other candidates. That's a little different. Should add some interest to this uh, forum. And then each candidate will make a one minute closing statement. Now we're going to be pretty much going from left to right. So we won't be telling you the order. I've seen other debates, they keep saying the order of questions. We're going to be starting with Doug and continue along left to right, and you'll see how that works. We're going to ask uh, Brittany and Cindy to get ready because we'll ask Doug to make a one-minute opening statement, Doug Belanger. Thank you. As a lifelong resident, I'm part of the fiber of the 17th Worcester District. At the end of World War II, my dad returned home to his main South parents' home, and then shortly after married his Worcester sweetheart, and they started family on a three-decker on Nealon Street. I've been volunteering throughout the Worcester District for over 30 years, and I currently serve as the treasurer of the Worcester Regional Transit Authority, treasurer of the Worcester Central Mass Labor Council. I'm on the Worcester Airport Advisory Commission, and I've been elected and re-elected as a selectman for the town of Leicester for the last 18 years. I'm invested in this district as a homeowner, a taxpayer, a husband and a father, and me and my wife of 28 years are bringing up the fourth generation of Belangers right here in the 17th Worcester District. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Belanger. <laughs> Our next one minute opening statement by Michael Germain. This is good to get Gary you didn't set this up right after. <laughs> 
Thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm Michael Jamaica. I was a three-term city councilor uh, in the city of Worcester. Uh, I was born and raised in Columbus Park, right, right across the street. You can actually see my house sitting over here on the, on the shores of Coe's Pond. Um, I have always loved this part of the city. My mother still lives here. I now live with my mother. Uh, I know that's kind of sad at 48 years old, but it's just something that's happened in my life, so he's got to deal with it. But uh, uh, I am totally invested in, in, in this section of the city. Uh, really, the main reason that I wanted to run was that I knew the situation that was happening with John, John Menenda. And his love for constituent services is exactly what I used to love on the city council, which is, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm going to, you know, everybody's going to tell you that we want more local funding, we want, you know, all these other issues, but the bottom line is, well, I have to stop. But, all right, I've got to stop. We'll, we'll give you closing state services. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we're limiting to one minute on these opening statements. Okay, the next opening statement will be by Moses Dixon. Well, first of all, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. I want to thank City Councilor Gary Rosen, uh, Walter Bird of Worcester Magazine, and Hank Stokes for moderating uh, tonight's event. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in a struggling family. I'm the first out of eight to graduate from high school and go to college. I was fortunate enough to get my master's in community development planning at Clark University, and uh, I decided to stay in this city and make a vested interest and return that investment that, that this city and the university invested in me. I spent the last uh, year and a half working at the State House with State Rep Mary Keefe and also working with uh, City Council Rivera and learning uh, the challenges and the issues of this district. And so I just look forward to tonight's debate and I look forward to uh, conversating more. Thank you. Thank you, Moses. opening statement of one minute will be by Kate Campanelli. Okay, well, thank you, Worcester Magazine, for sponsoring this event tonight and inviting me to participate. I Gary Walker Inc. for being our panelist. I, I do want to start by offering my sincere condolences to the Benenda family. I think uh, Brett Benenda has touched everyone in this room with his dedication to this community. So why am I right? Well, I believe I can make a difference. I have the background, the experience, and the drive to make this happen. Little did I realize that I would develop this passion to serve my community, but I'm really ready to turn this passion into action. So uh, I'm here tonight to offer some new ideas, a fresh perspective, and really just the chance for you to get to know me. So I look forward to the questions and uh, some, some of my opinions. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll begin the, the questions for this evening, and the first one is directed to Doug Belanger. Doug, to bring more jobs to the Leicester and Worcester areas of District 17, an influx of businesses and commercial enterprises is needed. As a new state representative, detail the actions that you will take to accomplish this. Thank you. And how long are these? Uh, 90 you seconds. have 90 seconds. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, it, it's the experience of having had my own business for 20 years prior to becoming a representative of working folks for another 25 years. I get not only what is needed for jobs, but what business needs for that. When I owned Paxton Supermarket, there was a program that had incentives for businesses that hired people that were unemployed, whether they were out of school or lost a job. And those incentives were tax breaks on our state income tax or our corporate income tax for the state that gave us incentives, for instance, to say, if I brought in some folks, I'd get, and I don't remember the numbers, this was the 80s, but it was, it was a great program in the idea that it was a reduction of, say, 50% of their salary came off the first six months and so on. So those are incentive programs. The other is, really, I think the most important piece we're missing in this economy is the training for folks who either can't or unable but don't want to go to college. Those training programs or apprentice type programs are being used from our friends in labor and from business. Much like I learned the business from Ray Goretti and the, the Goretti family supermarkets, we need more training for those folks that do not plan for whatever reason to go to college or can't afford to. So those, those are some very quick and very doable things and they've worked in the past. 
Thanks. Now, each of the other candidates will have the ability to have a... Same 90 seconds. Same 90 seconds, okay. So each of you will, for, for the same question, the same 90 seconds? Yeah. Okay. If you, want, if you want the question repeated, okay. we'll do that too. Absolutely, and basically, Mike, we're looking for ways to bring more jobs to, to Leicester. And yeah, and I, I, and I agree a little bit with what Doug said, and, and the one thing that I think is important is a commitment to, in our, in our city, Worcester Tech. Um, you know, have these kids that are graduating commit to our unions, point blank. They're going to commit to our unions and, and go into the apprenticeship program, and we should be able to figure out some way to work with those kids and with those companies that are willing to accept those kids and, and provide them jobs in the immediate future right away. Also, I look at Leicester, and, and you know, quite frankly, I can't tell you that I, I lived in Leicester, but I, I've spent enough time in this area and, and know everything, not everything, I know a lot about Leicester, and realize that Leicester's business sector is really just a bunch of mom and pop shops. You know, so we need to work with the state to create some sort of uh, industrialized area, an industrial area, where we can bring in some major corporations and, and big employers to provide jobs for the Leicester citizens because the tax base is just basically residential tax base and small mom and pop shops. We need some big companies out there. Moses Dixon? Well, I think, uh, you know, this is definitely an important topic and I've, you know, heard from a lot of folks from Leicester and in, in Worcester out door knocking. There's a great concern, uh, particularly in Leicester, that there's not enough business growth or the idea of bringing in new businesses that could potentially employ uh, the folks that live in the community. And one of the things that the city of Worcester uh, has done is uh, adopted Chapter 43D, which is the local um, expedited permitting uh, um, uh, process, which, is, which will allow, these. this is a targeted area for economic uh, development. And, I, and, and to my knowledge, I don't think the town of Leicester has adopted that yet, but I think that's something that we should look uh, to do uh, moving forward. And, you know, if elected, one of the committees that I will request uh, to be on is the Committee for Community Development and Small Business. We have got to figure out a way to how do we create jobs by bringing in new businesses or expanding existing businesses. So I think it's something of high importance and something that I will advocate for on day one. Okay, Captain Allen. Well, my legislative priorities surround business development. Speak right into that microphone, real close. Okay, I can get the Okay, my, my legislative priorities surround business development. And I think we need to provide some responsible economic development. And so how do we do this? Well, we're providing incentives that we know will work. And one plan that I really like, and I think Gary knows about this, is called the Philly Plan. And we have a plan similar here in Worcester, but it's called the HDIP, the Housing Development Incentive Plan. And this is a plan that actually, it, it takes a property and you box in the value. And a, a property owner will put money into it, invest in that, increase the property value. But instead of, you know, slamming this homeowner with a tax bill before they even get a tenant, the HDIP allows for this tax increase to, to spread over a number of years. It actually allows for a good return on investment. And I would like to see something similar to this on a corporate level, a corporate development incentive program that works the same way and provides the same mechanism. And what will that do is put some of these vacant buildings here in Worcester back to work. And this business will bring more business, which will bring customers, which will in turn increase the tax revenue for the city. And this is called development. And this is something that we desperately need here in Worcester. Now we do have 30 seconds for each of you if you have a rebuttal for something which someone else had to say. See Doug Melanchon moving the microphone. Yeah, he's going to pass up an open mic. <laughs> Look at the, uh, just so everybody knows, the town of Leicester votes town meeting. Town meeting has rejected a number of business development and business proposals, and that is their right. Second of all, I would have a problem with state government telling the city of Worcester or the town of Leicester what to do or how to develop or what policies to take. It is really up to us to make policies available and local communities to accept or reject those policies. 30 seconds. Move on to Walter's question. 
I'm actually going to change the second question a little bit, Gary. Um, this is going to go to you, Mike, first. Uh, it, there's obviously there's been a recent spate of uh, drug deaths in the city, in Worcester. But it hasn't just been Worcester, it's been all over. It's been all over the state. Taunton dealt with it earlier. Heroin use is growing, it's deadly, and we're talking about a larger uh, issue, we're talking opiate abuse. At the street level, at the provider level, and among the users in the community, the number one concern has been lack of services. More importantly, we hear it in schools referred to as wrap 